So to close today, I, I want to pick a quote from your book because I think it, in part I think it's a very eloquent sentence that you wrote with regard to considering how much you engage with the neo confederate community, are active on Twitter, are active on Facebook, have your blog, and towards the end of the book you wrote, no amount of contrary evidence or careful historical interpretation will likely persuade some otherwise referring to individuals in the neo confederate camp. So I guess in part the question becomes of if you're not intending to persuade them, who are you writing for? Yeah. And how are we ever having an ability to persuade somebody like Neo Confederates that this is a myth? Hmm. You know, I think one of the things I've learned over the years in, in writing about this, talking with people, you know, teachers, Civil War enthusiasts, it seems to me that the vast majority of people who fall for this narrative, um, they're not coming at it from a neo-Confederate perspective. They're not, their intention is not to, to, uh, to embrace myth, right, as history. I think they're legitimately interested in, in, the, in the subject. I think they struggle with trying to find, you know, um, the right material, whether it's primary source material, especially secondary source material. I mean, there are only a few books that, that sort of address this topic head on. Um, and so, you know, my hope is that it gets in the hands of people who are just genuinely interested in this, in this specific subject. I think as far as the neo-Confederates are concerned, you know, they, you know, it's, it's the late 1970s where the Sons of Confederate Veterans starts, you start to hear these sort of calls, um, you know, for members to find their own black Confederates to counter this sort of burgeoning uh, emancipationist narrative that's sort of you know, beginning to gain steam coming out of the civil rights movement, mm -hmm. right? We're talking about emancipation, we're talking about black union soldiers, and the SCV is feeling defensive. So the whole genesis of this narrative is, is coming from a, um, a disingenuous place, right? Their goal is to save their skins in a way, right? Their goal is to make it so they can continue to defend their Confederate ancestors, right? Um, and, not have, and not have to worry about the issue of, of slavery. And you know that's the late 1970s. It, it seems to me that that history right now is uh, maybe you know, I don't know if you, if you agree with this. I mean that history has become so overly politicized in the mm -hmm. last few years, you know, especially since the the murders in Charleston, right, right. where the, the whole monument issue, especially the Civil War period, has been incredibly politicized. Absolutely. I mean the the, the, the after 2015 with all the monuments uh, sort of. You know, up for grabs. The question about what to do. The Confederate flag, right. Confederate symbolism generally. You it's know, good for Civil War historians. It's because great. We're it's having the media attention. It, absolutely, it's great for Civil War historians and especially historians who focus on memory. It, it's not so good in terms of trying to find those spaces where you can have, you know, serious conversations, right? And I think, even though the the neo Confederates are still, um, I mean, they, they they're still pushing forward forward with this narrative. Um, I argue in the book that ultimately they, they haven't been successful. If, if the goal was to make this narrative part of the mainstream discourse, I don't think that's happened, mm -hmm. right? You're not gonna find it in museums, you're not gonna find it, uh, you didn't find it at, you know, at any key sesquicentennial events between 2011 and 2015. So I think ultimately they fell short, but obviously it's still there. Um, and I think for people who are looking at history through a political lens. They're looking at history as a way to sort of um, reinforce their own assumptions about race, about politics, mm -hmm. uh, about any number of things. I think the narrative, the black Confederate narrative will, will certainly allow them to do that. And, and, and as a historian, and look, we, we probably have seen this in our own classrooms, right. you know, you, there's probably not much you can do to to challenge that, I mean, it just seems to me they're sure. coming they're coming at it from a place where we're we're not really talking about the possibility of having sort of serious discourse, right? I right. mean, so so I guess you know in the end, like I said at the beginning, you know, it's it. I'm hoping the book ends up in you know in um, in people's hands who are who are just genuinely interested in, in in the subject, and that seems to be what's happening. I mean, it, yeah. at least in the last few weeks. I mean, yeah, good. You know, so we'll see. We'll see.
I guess we'll see tonight since we're at the Atlanta that, History Center and you are about to present on your book. That's right, we will see. <laughs> we will see, absolutely.